Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we'll be taking a look at every single force field in under 17 minutes. Before we get started, we need to take a look at the force fields and really try to understand exactly what they are. Force fields offer a way to influence the simulation. They work with all types of physics including particles, fluid, smoke, fire, rigid bodies, soft bodies, cloth simulations, and even dynamic paint. Objects can also become force fields by going over to the physics tab and selecting force field. Now your monkey head is a wind force field. Now let's talk about the common settings for the force fields. The shape value sets the direction of the force. Empty objects can only use the point and the plane types, but if you are using a mesh for the force field, you can set it to surface. Now every face on that mesh is going to emit a force. If you select every point, now the vertices will have the force instead of the face itself. Strength, of course, is how strong the force field will affect the simulation. This can also be set to a negative value, and that will give you the opposite effect. For example, if you have the force type enabled and you set it to a negative value, instead of pushing objects away, it will actually bring them closer. The flow value defines how quickly the force will be converted into a constant airflow velocity. In other words, it will make the particles eventually move at the same speed. If the flow is off, the particles will continuously gain velocity as they get higher. This is because the wind is constantly being applied, whereas if the flow is turned on, it will actually slow down the particles until they're moving at a constant rate rather than continually gaining speed. The noise amount will give your wind some randomness and change up how it looks. The seed controls the noise pattern of that randomness. The absorption allows collision objects to absorb some of that force. In the collision object settings, you will have a slider to control how strong this absorption is. The wind factor is how much strength is reduced when an object is parallel to a surface. You can see if this is off, it will just slide across the plane without any problems, but with it turned on, it will actually have resistance on the plane itself. Now we're getting into the fall off. Fall off, as you can probably guess it, allows you to control when the force field will fall off at a certain distance. You can control the shape of the fall off and the different options will give you some really cool results. With the Z direction, you can either have it fall off in the positive Z or negative Z or both. Before we talk about the power, let's discuss the minimum and maximum values. Here you can set when the force field will no longer affect the simulation. The power option is kind of a mix between these two values. The higher you set this to, the particles will become closer to the minimum, and the lower the power is, it will actually push the particles away to where the max distance is. The radial settings underneath is for the size of the shape. Whatever is outside the radial will not have an effect on the force fields. And of course, the power is the mix between those different values. Now that we have a basic understanding of the force fields, let's talk about each and every one of them. The force is the simplest force field of them all. It adds a constant force from the center of the object's origin. Positive values will push particles away and negative values will bring them closer. The wind force field is also pretty easy to understand. It will add a constant force in the direction that you point it in. Vortex will spin particles around. This can be very useful if you're wanting to create a tornado or some sort of an effect like that. Positive values will have the particles go in a counterclockwise direction, and negative values will go in a clockwise direction. The magnetic force field adds a magnetic force to the particles. You can basically think of this as a gravitational pull. The harmonic force field is very cool. Depending on the shape that you set it to, it will attract particles to that object. If it is set to the point option for the shape, it will bring the particles to the origin point. Whereas if it's set to surface and if you apply it to a mesh, it will bring the particles to the surface of the mesh. There are two values here, dampening and rest length. Dampening will dampen the effect that the pole has. With it set to zero, the particles will get pulled towards the mesh, but then go right through it and then come back. There is no dampening effect. Rest length is the area around the mesh that the particles will land on. 
higher values will result in particles being further away from the mesh. The charge force field deals with positive and negative charges. For this, you need to activate two force fields. If both of them are positive or negative values for the strength, they will separate from each other. If one is positive and the other one is negative, the particles will come together. In this case, I have set the particles to have a negative charge and the sphere to have a positive charge. And as you can see when I play the simulation, it will come together. The Leonard Jones force field is based off of the Leonard Jones potential, created by this guy right here. A simple version of this force field is the interaction between simple atoms and molecules. While researching this, it got really complicated, and this is a Blender tutorial, not an in-depth mathematical scientific one. So all you really need to know is that this force field will repel particles at a close distance, attract particles at a moderate distance, and the particles that are already inside the object don't have any effect. To use the texture force field, we need to add it in first. So I'm going to press Shift A, go underneath force field, and then add in a texture force field right here. If we go over to the physics tab, we can see a couple of different settings. Over on the right side, you can change the texture mode if you want to use the actual colors, the gradient, or a curl. With a lot of my testing, I didn't find too much of a difference between these three values. Before we talk about the strength, let's actually create a new texture. I'm going to click new on this texture and then go over to the texture panel. You can either decide to use an image or movie, or you can use a predetermined texture right here that Blender has to offer. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using a wood texture, and then underneath the pattern, I'm going to set it over to rings. Now what happens if we go back over to the physics tab, we'll change the strength up to a value of about four or so, we'll restart and then play this, and we can see that we do get that texture, but it's only for a split second. You can see it right there, and currently though, it's spraying out the particles all over the place. The reason this is happening is because the this value here, the nabla, is a little bit low. If we drag this up to a value of about 0.2, we'll play this and you can see it helps a little bit, but they're still flying everywhere. So in order to fix that, we can select our particle system, go over to the particle system tab, underneath the physics, I'm going to set the dampening all the way up to one. Now, if we restart and play this, we can see we get this effect. If we go back over to the force field now, we can change a couple of settings. First off, we can click on 2D and this will prevent the particles from moving upwards. So now if we restart and play it, here is the effect. The strength value controls how fast the particles would go to that pattern. And what the nebula does, this will give the particles a little bit of movement after they've reached that position. So for example, if this is turned off, we'll restart and then play it. We can see the particles go to that position on the texture and stay exactly where, they, where they're at. But if the nebula is turned up to a value of about 0.1 or so, the particles will have a little bit of movement after they've reached that position. The use coordinates value will allow you to use the coordinates of your object rather than the coordinates of the plane itself. So in this case, if I turn on use coordinates, restart, and then move my uh, force field over to the right side and play it, you can see that the rings are forming around this object. If we drag it over to the middle, restart and play it, we can see that's exactly what's happening. Another cool thing that you can do with the texture is if you change it over to a blend texture, go back over to the physics tab and turn up the strength to around 35 or so. Now, if we restart and play our simulation while moving the force field over to the right side, we can get this sort of an effect. And you can see the potential with the textures and the force fields. So there you go. That is a basic overview of the texture force field. Instead of just talking over how the curve guide works, we're actually going to be creating something cool. So to start out with, we need to add in a curve. You can use an existing curve or you can press Shift A and go underneath the force field tab and add in a curve guide force field. From here, I'm gonna move the cube off to the left. We're not going to delete it because we are gonna be using it later. And with this, you can go into edit mode, select the different points and move the curve around and place it how you want. You can also select one of the ends, press E to extrude and extend the curve along. Now, if we restart our simulation and play it, you can see the particles are moving along the curve. The speed of the particles is determined by the lifetime. Right when the particle gets emitted, it has 50 frames to go across and reach the end. Right when it reaches the end of the curve, it dies. So make sure that you set the lifetime up to the speed that you want. If we turn this up to about 150, 
now the particles will move a lot slower. Now they have 150 frames until they reach the end. Let's select our curve and go into the curve settings. We have a couple different values here that changes how it looks, and let's talk about the minimum distance. The minimum distance is a bit weird, and it's basically the distance from the curve up to where the force field has a full effect. This setting does not do anything unless it's paired with the falloff power. If the falloff power is at zero, the minimum distance will not have any effect. I've noticed when using this setting that it sometimes breaks the simulation and makes the particles move very quickly. For example, if I drag the falloff power up to around 0.5 or so, we'll restart and play it, you can see some of the particles are shooting across the screen very quickly. So most of the time I will leave the falloff power at zero. Something that you might want to change is the free setting right here. This value determines how much extra time the particle will have once it reaches the end of the curve. For example, if I bring it up to a value of about 0.2 or so, we'll play our simulation, you will notice that the particles are moving a bit faster because they have some extra time at the end, and then the particles will fall and disappear around this point. So that is what the free does. It gives you a little bit of extra time for the particles to fly off the curve. Something that's really cool with this curve guide is the clumping and the shape amount. The clumping will allow you to clump the particles together as they reach the end of the curve or the beginning of the curve. For example, if this is all the way up to one, you'll notice that once it reaches a certain point, they start to shrink and become smaller. The shape value allows you to control the shape of this clumping amount. You can see if the shape is up a little bit, it becomes smaller at a quicker pace over here. But if it's a lot lower, it will become a lot smaller much more quickly as you can see here. The use max option allows you to use a maximum distance that the curve will actually affect the particles. If this is turned on and we drag this up just slightly and play it, you can see it's not catching any of the particles. If I drag it up higher though, it's starting to catch some of the particles. And if I go even higher, it's going to catch all of the particles and move them on the curve. Underneath that, we have a kink option, and currently this is actually broken, and it does not work with this version of Blender, unfortunately. But basically, what this is supposed to do is change how the particles operate and how they move along the curve. Now that we've created a really cool simulation with our particles, let's add in this cube to be the particles, and then I'll show you how to rotate them as they go along. So to do this, we'll select our plane, go over to the particle system, we're going to set the lifetime a bit higher so they move slower. Let's go with a value of 150. And underneath the render tab, we're going to select render as halo to render as object. And then for the instant object, select the cube. I'm going to bring up the scale, something around here or so. And then we're going to turn on rotation. Over in the rotation settings, I'm going to turn on dynamic, open up the angular velocity and set the amount to two. This means that the cube will actually rotate around as it's going along the curve, as you can see here. With the randomize setting, it will give you some more randomness with the rotation, and that is actually what I'm going to do. So probably around a value of 0.6 will be good, and this is the effect that we're getting. Another cool feature that you can use with this curve is the lifetime randomness. Since the lifetime determines the speed of the particles, if there is some randomness, it will actually speed up some of the particles. Now, if we restart and play it, you can see this is the effect that we're getting. So using the curve guide, you can create some really cool simulations. The buoyed force field does not affect the physics of the particles. Rather, it works together with the buoyed physics in the particle system to create predators and goals for the buoyed brain. This is a whole nother topic that gets very complicated that we will have to save for another tutorial. The turbulence force field is one of my favorites to play around with. What this does is it will create a noise pattern for the force fields and give your particles a lot of randomness. There is also a new value right here called size and this controls the size of the noise. You can see with it set to zero the pattern is pretty small, but if you were to drag the size all the way up as high as it can go up to 10, the noise pattern will be a lot bigger. If the flow value is set to zero and the size is also set to zero, the particles will just spray out randomly and without any sort of pattern. 
but if you bring the flow up to a value of about three or so, the particles will kind of bunch together and create some really interesting results. The turbulence force field also deals with coordinates. If global is turned off, it will disregard the location of the turbulence and create the noise pattern based on the origin of the world. The drag force field allows you to add a little bit of air drag to the particles. There are two different values, linear and quadratic. They both do very similar things. If both of them are set to zero, it will have no effect and the particles will just fall down. If the linear is set up to two and that's the highest you can go, it will slow down the particles and act like there's a little bit of wind drag. The quadratic is very similar to the linear except it deals with the square of the velocity rather than just the velocity itself. If both of these values are set to two, it will slow down even more. If the linear is set to zero and the quadratic is set up to two, you can see it does slow it down a little bit, but not as much as the linear. Next up on our list is the fluid flow force field. For this, you're going to need a fire, smoke, or fluid simulation. From there, add in a particle system. I go in over to the particle system, adding one in. I'm gonna set the lifetime to 100, the gravity down to zero, and underneath the velocity, I'm gonna set the normal to zero. From there, I can press Shift A, add in a force field, and then select the fluid flow force field. We'll drag this up and then go over to the physics tab. For the shape, it doesn't really matter. What does matter though is the domain object. Make sure you click on the drop down menu and select your domain. The strength of this, we can set up to a value of around three or so. Now, if we restart and play it, the particles will actually follow the flow of the smoke. This is very useful for creating things like sparks from a fire. So there you have it. That is every single force field in Blender in under 17 minutes. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. If you created something cool using force field, please send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. If you're new to this channel, consider leaving a like and comment down below what you would like to see next. Also consider subscribing because I upload Blender tutorials all the time. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.